når man er participating in its spiritual sanctity. Amen. Uh, we will hear about two other saints today um, who were a little bit, well, one was a little bit crazy and the other one was a lot crazy. Um, but the, the point is that, uh, no, really, so, I mean, all the saints are crazy about God, but what happens when you have a crazy person who's crazy about God, right? And it's not the most appealing story, actually. Uh, we'll hear about that. It, it, it gets a little bit weird at times. You're like, oof, that's, that's not what you would expect from the life of a saint. But I say this because even if people have, like, a mental illness, they can still be saints. And, and, and so it's, so, it's very, very important that we see that. So the first is St. Martinian the Hermit. He was born around 350 AD, and he was at a young age, age 18, became a hermit in Palestine. And um, uh, yeah, apparently he, I mean, he was very uh, devoted, very um, uh, sincere, but knew his own weaknesses. And so it says once that a, um, when he's, he's in his little hermit you know, uh, uh, house or cave or whatever it is, a bedraggled young woman showed up at his door requesting traveler's hospitality. So he took her in and, and to be hospitable, but unfortunately turned out to be a bedraggled, beautiful young woman of ill repute, and she tried to seduce him. And when he realized what was happening and that he actually was feeling tempted, uh, he went over to the fire and put his feet into it, saying, if I cannot withstand this temporal fire, how will I tolerate the fires of hell? Uh, so the woman was, was horrified, and, and all thoughts of impurity ceased, and then he counseled her to give up her evil life, which she did, and ended, entered a convent in Bethlehem. So that, that intense, um, you would say, that, that very um, present sense of, of, the, of the evils and the, the punishments of sin. Well, it says further, to save himself from his own weakness, uh, uh, our Saint, Saint Martinian moved to a large rock surrounded on all sides by the sea. And there he lived on bread and water brought to him by a Christian sailor who visited him three times a year. Uh, after six years of living on this, this rock in the middle of the, of the sea, uh, he had another visitor. Uh, another young woman who washed up on the rock after her ship had gone down in, in a shipwreck. It seems that, I don't know, this saint and, and I don't know if it was Satan sending him, you know, these young women or what. But it says that before she could even speak, he gave her all of his provisions and promised to send his friend the sailor to rescue her. And then he threw himself into the sea to escape. And then I think it was like uh, he, washed, he washed up on the shore, and two months later, uh, the girl was rescued. He then spent the rest of his days in Athens. Um, so there you have it, uh, the, the lengths that some of the saints will go to avoid sin. But, you know, I said this before in, in a sermon not too long ago, how precious um, virginity is to God, how, how beautiful and, and uh, important is the virtue of chastity. And, and so this, this is, well, there's so many saints, and it's not like they're, um, uh, th th this is inspired by God, right? That, that care and that concern for purity, that is inspired by God. And that lets us know how important it is that this, this young man, St. Martinian, was willing to suffer, uh, uh, um, you know, putting his feet in the fire, jumping into the ocean, risking his life to preserve uh, his, his purity from himself, from his own weakness. So that lets us know the lengths we should go to, um, or at least the, 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 des the desire, the importance we should place on especially the virtue of purity. It is such an important virtue, uh, we don't really realize it that, that, that much. Uh, so thus, St. Martinian the Hermit, uh, 350 AD, and now uh, there is St. Uh, Eustochium of Padua, and she was a nun in the 1400s, and her name was Luc Lucretia when she grew up, but, but she took a different name later on. and. Um, you know, she just had a kind of a, 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 a different life from the beginning. Uh, her mother was a nun who had been seduced into um, ignoring her vow of chastity. So this nun gets pregnant and has a child, and it's Lucrezia. And um, Lucrezia, so she grew up in the convent, which I guess is a good thing, and not surprisingly felt a call to the religious life. But of course, many of the sisters oppose that because of her ignoble, uh, the, the, the ignoble um, uh, circumstances of, of her, her, her birth. However, the bishop, the local bishop, approved of her vocation, and she entered the novitiate as a Benedictine nun in 1461 
taking the name uh, Eustochium. Now, she was normally very humble and obedient, but soon began to display strange and curious fits of unusual behavior uh, in which she acted like a madwoman. Uh, they would find her with self-inflicted wounds, she would walk on high roofs, and she would be found naked in her cell with marks on her throat, uh, with nobody else being able to get in or out. And for four years, she suffered from these violent hysterical fits. Uh, they considered her to be possessed, and she was imprisoned and fed on bread and water, periodically starved, tied up for days at a time, and repeatedly exercised. Uh, when her abbess fell ill, she was accused of poisoning her and had to be saved from a mob of townsmen who wanted to burn her as a witch. Uh, between these bouts of madness, however, she was gentle, pious, patient, and humble. And she took it all as a form of penance. And her confessor and spiritual director insisted that she be allowed to continue her vocation. And, and in between the, the, these fits of madness, uh, her sanctity and piety won over many of the sisters who, who initially had opposed her. Uh, she died very soon after making her formal vows, and uh, when they were preparing her for burial, they found the name of Jesus cauterized onto her breast, not miraculously placed there like a self-inflicted cauterization wound. Um, and that is not, that's not a good thing. That is not something that, you, that is recommendable. Uh, what it shows is that God will not spare us from grave physical or even grave psychological illnesses. He's not going to save us. If somebody has schizophrenia or something like that, God is not necessarily going to heal that just because you want to be a saint. Uh, but the other thing, the wonderful thing, is that just because you have schizophrenia, it's not going to stop you from being a saint. That is so important to understand. There is no illness. There's no, um, there's no malady mental, physical, uh, um, 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 uh, emotional, there is no evil that can prevent us from becoming a saint. Because when she died, the odor of sanctity was present at her grave. People smelled the aroma of roses. Uh, so that is a sign of divine favor. Um, and she's a saint in the church. Um, and, and, and so that is something that, that, that I would say that, yes, you, 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 this is, does not sound like the life of a normal saint. Um, but, but that is so important in that, you know, I, I do not believe in censoring sanctity, right? Just, you read the Bible, there are some horrible stories in the Bible. There's infidelity, there's adultery, there's incest, there's murder, there's, there's all kinds of awful things in the Bible. Read all of that to your kids. It's important for us to see, look, this is life. And in Christ our Lord, in his own past, in his genealogy, there is, a, there, there's, there's adultery, there's, all, there's murder, there's all kinds of things, like King David. Well, I was an adulterer, adulterer and a murderer. And, that's Christ, and, and, and Christ is the son of David. That, that's who is a, the son of David, have pity on me. This is that you are the son of David, etc. It's a noble title, but look at what, well, look, look what that noble man did, right? But he repented from that. He had his problems. Everybody has their problems. So don't, don't be upset if, if you are tormented with, with, with a mental illness or all the usual things, depression, uh, uh, bipolar, ADD, schizophrenia, any of these things. Don't worry about that. Don't think, what, what, what is God going to do? Is God going to heal me? No, he's not going to heal you. Maybe yes, maybe no. But he still can make you a saint. And, and, and this is proof of it. So do not let anything uh, uh, depress you or make you think that you, you can't be saved or that you can't even achieve holiness. Yes, you can. Anybody can do it. So God bless you all in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.